Today, the Sekhar Jala Investment Holding Group has sued the government and the presidency for $4 billion. For South African viewers, that's 75 billion rand. Dr. Survey, today you have announced that your group, the Second Jalo Investment Holdings, will be suing the government and the presidency for $4 billion for the loss of value of your businesses. Now, this is the first time in South African history that the government and the presidency has been sued. Can you please tell us about it? You are quite correct. Today, we issued the notice to the government, which is required in terms of the Institution Act, Section 3, uh, number 40 out of 200, which is if you're going to issue a summons against state organs, you have to do that. So we've done that. We've had a team of um, advocates and researchers working for quite some time on the losses that we have suffered as a group. We've, we've suffered losses of about $4 billion, which is 75 billion rand. Um, since President Ramaphosa came to power and since him and his ministers have used state organs against the Second Jalo Group uh, in order to destroy our businesses. And these are the actual losses that we've incurred, not necessarily the uh, future losses. That must still be calculated by actuaries and so the number will be substantially more. But our papers have indicated to the uh, president, the presidency, uh, the government, the organs of state, the various organs of state, which we set out in our papers, uh, that the amount for now is $4 billion or 75 billion rand. So when you say that the state entities have affected your business, can you give some examples of how they have conspired against your business? Well, we have maintained that we're a group in existence for more than uh, 20 years. We're one of the first black companies to be listed on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. We're one of the first black companies, if not the first, to be a member of the World Economic Forum uh, and the global. So we have a global presence and we've invested in 40 countries globally. And when Ramaphosa came to power, uh, Ramaphosa used um, his ministers, state institutions such as the intelligence services, the financial service conduct authority, uh, treasury, various other institutions of government. We mention them all in our papers where we sue the government, uh, where we've given the notice in terms of section 3. We mention these, he's used it against us. He set up the party commission in order to smear us and um, uh, you know, as a result of his actions and the actions of people such as Minister Pravin Gordon and others, we have suffered these losses. And it's very much, uh, very much like a mafia state. And it's very important that um, we don't allow the president and his ministers and the government to act with impunity. Uh, we are determined to hold them account, to accountable and we determined that they will pay us these damages that we have lost. Well, where did you file it and how did you file this case against the state? So, in terms of the um, Institution Act, or we call it the Institution of Legal um, Proceedings Against Certain Organs of the State, it's Act Number 40 of 202, Section Number 3, 3.1, 3.2. It's also called the Institutional Act. When you sue the presidency, when you sue the president, when you sue the government, when you sue various organs of state, you have to file this notice. Our advocates have worked on this for 18 months now. We've had a team of four senior advocates working on this. We've had whistleblowers providing us with valuable information. We've had key intelligence people providing us with valuable information. We have used the various statements of various ministers. We've used the various documents of various ministers. We've used the various pronouncements. So our suing the government is both because they've committed certain um, slanderous um, things against us, but at the same time, they've omitted from protecting our businesses when they should have. All of this has resulted in uh, institutions such as banks and the JSC, and other regulatory bodies that we cite, uh, you know, in our papers having acted against our group. And of course, um, you know, we've lost, uh, right now the value we've lost 
is four billion dollars, and um, that's been calculated accurately. And uh, the, how have you actually how have you actually come to the calculation of four billion dollars? Or well, you know, the group has two hundred companies. Uh, they are present in about forty countries. Uh, it has built an investment value of about uh, almost one hundred and twenty billion rand, or five billion dollars, uh, and that's why the group has become you know, one of the preeminent global companies in Africa. Um, a lot of that value has been destroyed by what has happened by the Ramaphosa administration. And uh, they've only done this because we own one of the largest media companies in Africa, that's independent media, and our media has consistently exposed uh, personal issues of the president, some of which I don't agree with, by the way. I don't think that should be what media does, but in any event, that's what our editors and journalists did. But where I agree with them is they've exposed the corruption in relation to Palapala, the PPE looting of tens of billions. They've exposed the corruption relating to ESCOM in Transnet and, you know, a whole host. And we've held our government accountable. All the other media have become the sweethearts of the Ramaphosa administration, covering up, you know, their corruption, the incompetence and the mismanagement of the state. We haven't done so. Our journalists in the true art of media freedom have been free to actually expose all of this. And for that, the government has launched the campaign against my group, Second Jolo, and against myself personally. And they've utilized their friends in the media, in the banks, and in some cases in the judiciary to act against our group, or, and including regulatory institutions uh, such as the FSCA, the South African Reserve Bank, and we have ample evidence and proof of what they have done. And for that very reason, you know, we, uh, we, we have consistently said to government, stop doing this. You know, I'm an ambassador for this country. I'm globally recognized by 14 countries I've been recognized in various ways, in 14 countries from the USA to Europe. Uh, to, 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 to the East and Africa, etc., Asia and Africa. And I continue to be an ambassador for this country. And I've really told um, the president and his ministers to stop the smear campaign, to stop using state organs against us. It's always a difficult decision to sue the government because, you know, we love our country. But frankly speaking, Ramaphosa's government is not the government of Nelson Mandela or Thabo Mbeki. Uh, you know, it is a government that has really acted like a mafia state against people like myself. That's a black, a very successful black businessman, one of the most successful black groups in this country that are able to give black people, you know, a sense of pride that they can really achieve along other white businesses in this country to make South Africa great. And what did Ramaphosa and his people do? They launched the campaign against us and uh, destroyed our businesses and destroyed the value uh, you know, of $4 billion and put at risk the lives of employees, thousands and thousands of employees, the lives of um, you know, suppliers to us, in particular black suppliers, customers of ours, and frankly speaking, the foreign exchange of billions over the years that we've generated you know, for South Africa. So that's very sad. But at the end of the day, we do this with great reluctance. And hence, we filed the notice because at the end of the day, the South African government and the presidency and President Ramaphosa has to be held accountable for what he has done and what his ministers has done in his name. Well, it's about time, isn't it, Dr. Survey, that we finally hold the president and the government accountable and stop this country from becoming a mafia state. I love my country. And it's important to hold politicians to account. It's important that they don't get away with acting with impunity, especially when we have done nothing wrong. And as difficult a decision this is, it's an important, important time. And the time has come to actually do this. We will, as we go along, provide further information with regard to all of this. And there'll be more companies separately in the second Jolly group. 
in the next few weeks that will be separately issuing uh, you know, Section 3 notices, uh, summonses against the South African government, organs of state and the president. Well, thank you, Dr. Survey. South Africa needs people like you to advocate and protect both media freedom and also black business and black business rights. So this is a case we'll be following closely. We wish you the best. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Thank you, Dr. Survey.